Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that help tell the story of the 20th century. Each family, upon arrival at a relocation center, was assigned to a single room compartment, about 20 by 25 feet. Barren, unattractive. A stove, a light bulb, cots, mattresses, and blankets. Those were the things provided by the government. The family's own furniture was in storage on the west coast. Scrap lumber, perhaps some wallboard, and a great deal of energy, curtains, pictures, drapes, depending on the family's own ingenuity and taste, helped to make the place livable. Some families built partitions to provide some privacy. Others took what they received and made the best of it. Boy Scouts, who usually provide the color guard for the American flag which floats over each center, are typical of the American organizations which are prominent in each relocation center. There's a USO club to provide entertainment for the Japanese American soldiers who come to the center to visit their families or friends. Girl Scouts, Campfire Girls, Parent-Teacher Associations, the Red Cross. The evacuees belong to these organizations in their former homes and transplanted them to the centers. The Boy Scout Drum and Bugle Corps here is leading a harvest festival parade, marking the high point of the successful season of farm production. Everyone turns out to view the beauty queen, to see the well-decorated floats, and to join in the good time that goes with the full day of celebration. While they have many things in common with ordinary American communities, in the really important things, relocation centers are not normal and probably never can be. Home life is disrupted. Eating, living, and working conditions are abnormal. Training of children is difficult. Americanism, taught in the schools and churches and on the playgrounds, loses much of its meaning in the confines of a relocation center.